Welcome back to the Ticket Setup Series. In today's session, we're going to focus in on part two of adding dynamic tasks to a lifecycle. So in part one, we highlighted the challenge that we're trying to solve by adding dynamic tasks to a lifecycle, and we're focusing in on our, our new hire process. Uh, part two, uh, sorry, in part one as well, we also highlighted the, the lifecycle pieces that are required um, to be in place to be able to add those dynamic tasks. Now, in part two, we're actually going to build the Power Automate flow to add those dynamic tasks. So what we'll do here is we'll travel over to Power Automate. Um, and to get there, you'll go to make.powerautomate.com. Now, we have a whole tech ticket setup series section um, on how to get Power Automate ready uh, for ticket and how to set up connections and things of that nature. I would recommend going visiting that to get you ready for Power Automate. Uh, but once you're ready, you'll come over here and you'll go over to my flows to, to build a flow that would add dynamic tasks. Now, I'm actually going to reuse a flow um, that we have used in the um, adding dynamic approvals um, part of the Power Automate setup series section. Um, I'm going to reuse that because it's kind of a best practice based upon the context of what we're doing here. And if you need more information on how to set up this flow step-by-step step to get you here, I would recommend go, going and watching the setup series uh, video for um, adding dynamic approvals. Uh, but once you've done that and you're comfortable, you can come back here and, and continue on with adding dynamic tasks. I, I will go over the cliff note version of it though. So what you're seeing here is the flow we created in that, in that setup series section. And this flow has a couple of elements. The first is, we're listening for a trigger um, in Power Automate, and that trigger is listening for when a new service request is created for my new hire automation. Uh, when that trigger happens, we're going and grabbing the requester's manager, um, and then we're making the requester's manager the approver. Um, and we're doing that by adding inside of my new hire automation lifecycle, inside of my approved new hire phase, uh, that approval. Um, now, what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, leverage this flow to also add dynamic tasks based upon this service request being created. Now, to do that, there's a couple of things we have to do prior to actually adding the dynamic tasks. And specifically, what we need to do is we need to um, understand what's being submitted in that form for that new hire process. So you'll see here that my trigger is listening for when that's created. And that trigger actually gives me the entire payload of the ticket. But the one thing it doesn't give me in, in, a, in a variableized way is the actual form that was filled out. To get the actual form, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, add a parse JSON action here to grab that form. Now, this particular step that I'm doing, there is a section in the setup series called uh, um, mapping custom form to a title. Um, and that section walks you through how to do this step by step. So I recommend going and watching that part of the setup series to understand how to grab a custom form. Uh, but specifically for this, I'm going to walk through it in a little bit of a cliff noted way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to search for parse, which will bring back my parse JSON action. This is a Microsoft Power Automate action. And when I do that, um, it's asking me for a couple of things. The first is asking me for is what do I want to parse? What content do I want to parse? I'm going to grab that content um, out of my payload from my uh, new hire service request uh, trigger. And specifically what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for JSON here and grab the card answer JSON. Now that's giving me the form and the schema here is asking me for how the properties should be variableized based upon the form itself. Now I have that format here um, sitting on my right hand side that I'm going to quickly grab and paste in here. Again, we have a whole section in the setup series Power Automate area around custom forms and how to grab this data. So I'd recommend watching that for the step by step here. But once you have that, effectively what you're able to do is you're able to read that form. So I'm grabbing the first name, the last name, the job title, the department, and the start date there. Um, I'm also going to rename this particular um, action, um, custom form for new hire. 
Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because I like to visually understand what's happening in a flow by reading the titles. And this is just a really easy way to, to document that as you're working through building a Power Automate flow. And I'll, and I'll do that throughout, that throughout this session. So once I have my form, um, then I can evaluate that form. And based upon data points, I can shift um, my life cycle. Now we talked about um, shifting and adding dynamic tasks to the, the account provisioning phase of that life cycle based upon the department being selected. So to do that, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna add another Microsoft Power Automate action, and that one's gonna be called a uh, switch command. And the switch command allows for me to evaluate any part of the ticket. So whether it's any part of the payload from the trigger or from the form, um, or any of the properties above it in terms of the different actions here. Uh, and you'll see here, it's asking me for one particular item here. It's asking me, what do I want to evaluate to switch on? Um, and for me, at least, I want to evaluate um, the department that was selected based upon that new hire being submitted. So what we'll do here is uh, we will search for, actually, I'll scroll through so you can see this. You'll see here, I have my parts JSON, which is my custom form for new hire. Um, and then I'm going to choose department here. So that's going to give me the department that was selected during the creation of that particular new hire. I'm also going to rename this um, evaluate department for new hire. Again, just for documentation purposes. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add I'm an evaluation in that switch command. So it's, I'm going to add a case statement. And when I click add here, what you're seeing here is the ability to add one or multiple evaluations. So what this is asking is, based upon what you have here, what do you want to do if it equals that? So in the part one area, we talked about if someone selected operations, what do we want to do? Um, so we'll choose, so we'll type operations here. I'm also changing the name of this case statement, operations. So you can visually see the context there. So um, if someone choose operations, what I want to do, I want to add a task. And specifically, I want to add a ticket task to the account provisioning lifecycle. So I'll search for ticket here, which will bring back my, my library for ticket. And I'll have all my actions here. But the one I'm looking for specifically is add task. And once I have that here, um, it's asking me for a couple of data properties. Um, the first is the ticket ID. So which ticket do I want to add this task to? And what we'll do is we'll go to dynamic properties here. Now there's a lot of properties because it's retrieving all the properties from all the previous actions. Uh, I could scroll through, but I could also just search for ticket ID, which is what I'm looking for. And I'm looking for the ticket ID from the trigger, which is this one right here. And then it's going to ask me for the information for the actual task. So for the title here, um, I want to call this uh, create operational account. You might have a specific application you want to title this after. I'm going to keep it generic for the purposes of this. And then you'll see here that under advanced properties, I have uh, more options. And those more options give me the opportunity if I want to, and if this process merits it, to add a task to a lifecycle for that particular ticket. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say uh, new hire automation. And then I'm going to select uh, account provisioning. And I'm going to assign this to someone. I'm actually just going to um, steal the email address right below um, where I'm typing, which is uh, Diego's email. And this effectively will assign this particular task to Diego. But you can specify anyone's email address here that's an agent in the system, and it will assign that task to that individual. So the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to rename this task to set up operations account. So again, it's visually documented here. A couple other things I want to highlight. Um, the first is um, I can have one or multiple tasks in this, in this case statement. So if I wanted to add another task here, maybe there's two or three accounts that we want to set up. Um, I can add those tasks here to do that. I don't have to, but I, I can. Um, the other thing I also want to highlight here is that I can evaluate any of the department selections based upon this switch statement. 
Um, so if I wanted to evaluate development and add tasks, or if I wanted to evaluate sales and add tasks, I, I could do that here. So I'm not limited just to one here. And again, the idea here is that when this new hire is submitted, yes, every employee is going to get an, account, uh, an HR and a, and a payroll account. Um, but uh, you might have um, additional accounts that are needed for different departments in the business that you can dynamically add um, as part of uh, this process here. I'm going to delete this to clean that up. And I'll zoom out just for some more visual context. So just to recap, what have we done in this particular section? We've um, listen for that new hire automation submission. We grabbed the custom form, um, and then we went in and based upon the department being selected from that form, we are evaluating that. And in this you know, base example, if operations is what's selected, we're gonna add a task to the life cycle, um, new hire automation to the phase account provisioning that's going to be assigned directly to Diego. Uh, that concludes this part of the uh, setup series. We will now move into part three, which will actually be seeing this work all together. Really hope you enjoyed this session and looking forward to seeing you on the next one.